Hello, hello. Welcome to Verbling. I'm Teacher Oakley. And for the next hour, we're going to talk fishing. Uh, in this class, we're going to do a number of different things. We're going to uh, do a little bit of reading. We're going to look at some vocabulary, talk about some idioms, as well as a great, a good deal of a uh, conversation about our experiences with fishing or lack of experience, if, if that is the case. Uh, okay, so a, a wide ranging class doing a bunch of different things to improve our English and learn some vocabulary related to fishing. One, uh, one thing about fishing, uh, the concept of fishing, many, many, many words and phrases uh, are, have many of the fishing related words have been incorporated into idioms. In fact, the whole concept of, of catching a fish uh, relates quite directly to the business world and catching a customer. You you use bait to hook the customer, you reel him in, you land the client. Um, very much the whole concept of fishing gets related metaphorically to business and the acquisition of customers. Okay, first let's get started and uh, let's talk fishing a little bit. Uh, Jorge, Luis, how, how are you today? I am good, thank you. And you? Doing okay, thank you. Go or ahead. hey, have you have you done have you ever been fishing? No, I have never. Never. I haven't never. I have never. Yeah, never, never, never. I only <laughs> eat fish. Okay, I have never, or I haven't ever. <laughs> yeah. One or the other. You could say it either way, actually. Haven't ever, or I have never. I have yeah. never. Either way, it's perfect. Never it means fishing. the same thing. Either way. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Never, never. Really? Would you like to go? Would you like uh, to try? Or have no uh, desire? Maybe if the target is a bit fish. <laughs> okay. All right, Captain yeah, Ahab. Like it's like a challenge, yeah, like a challenge. All right. But the usual fish, uh, I don't know if I can say that, but I think the the normal size of the fish, I think for me maybe it could be boring. Okay, so you're, we're talking about sport fishing, catching uh, swordfish or, or blue marlin or something. Yeah. Uh, dramatic. Yellowfin tuna or bluefin tuna, actually. Okay. Uh, yeah, all right. Well, that's cool. You could do that. That's possible. All right. Let me uh, also welcome Carolina to the class. Hi, Carolina. How are you today? Hello, teacher. I am good. And you? Oh, I'm doing okay. Thank you. Um, Carolina, how about you? Have you ever been fishing? No, me neither. I haven't done before. Okay, I haven't done that before. All right. Would you ever go, or do you negatively, do you have no interest in fishing, touching the slimy, <laughs> wet fish? Yeah, I think that I would like to try yeah, one day. Yeah, really? Yeah. Okay. What kind of fishing would you like to do? Or Orhe says he'd like to go sport fishing, like, as I'm assuming in the ocean. Would you like to try a little fly fishing in a river or bone fishing, fly fishing in the ocean or I think if uh, if I I would how can I say that? if I I I would do soon maybe I will choose a river because okay. Uh, here in Bogota, we only have river nears. We are, yeah, nearby. Yeah. Okay. Carolina, you can go to the to 
to the coast, Cartagena. Ah, okay, but it's... Tamata. Go to the but I have to take... <laughs> but I have to take plane. I, I am ah. thinking uh, one hour by car, something like that. <laughs> I don't know, like one day fishing. <laughs> one hour by car? That's a long ways for you? That's a long distance? Yeah. I always find that amusing. As an American, one hour by car is like my daily commute, so who cares? One hour by car, it's like five minutes. No, it's here, like a here, in Bogota, here in Bogota, it's, it's, normal. it's normal to, for example, go to work, it's one hour yeah, every right. okay. in the morning right. and at night. But I, I, I mean that, uh, for example, when I go out to Bogota, maybe one hour or two hours by car, and then go back at night. It's it spend my day fishing or something like that. Yeah, well, you want to get up early in the morning to go fishing. Yeah, it's no yeah. problem. Uh, <laughs> no problem. Okay, Carolina, uh, a little note about your English. Okay, let's uh, talk about this little phrasing that you used. Uh, if I would do soon. Well, can't do that, all right? Mm -hmm. um, strangely enough, most people don't recognize this, but if or unless uh, these subordinating conjunctions are actually considered in the English to be time subordinators. So like other more obvious time subordinators like after, before, when, while, as soon as, those are obviously time subordinators, subordinators, and so are if and unless. With time subordinators, all right, words that start dependent clauses uh, or subordinate clauses, you cannot ever use any any form of a future tense, or and that would be to include would. Uh, okay, so. You, you can't use will or would or going to um, with if. So um, you could say uh, you could say if I could, that's okay. Uh -huh. If I could go fishing in the in the near future, there's another um, phrase you might want to add to your lexicon in, uh -huh. the, in, in the near future. Uh, then you use would, I would, blah, blah, blah. Since it's obviously hypothetical, imaginary, mm -hmm. you don't have any plans right now, then this uh, phrasing to form actually the second conditional is very common. If I could do something, blah, 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 I would, whatever. Mm -hmm. This is very common. Phrasing for the second conditional. Okay. Uh, okay. All right. Thanks. Okay. Um, all right, so you guys probably, uh, we're going to be looking at some, uh, fishing lingo. Do you, lingo, do you know what lingo is, by the way? No, I don't. Jorge, or lingo? Oh, okay. Um, no? Okay. Uh, lingo, um, it's... A synonym might be jargon. Are you familiar? Familiar? familiar. <laughs> Sorry. Are you familiar with the word jargon? Maybe no. not. <laughs> okay. No. Lingo, jargon. Okay. Lingo or jargon are the words that are used for a very specific activity or perhaps occupation. Uh, so you have to learn the lingo. You, you need to learn the jargon. So, for example, uh, a very obvious example is like in the medical field. The doctor, doctors have their own specific words that they use, their own jargon. Lingo oh, yeah. is a little less in, uh, formal, so lingo is more informal. But uh, we're going to learn the lingo, so the words that are specifically for fishing. Or, All right. we're, as, as we go along, we'll talk about as well how many idioms come from these words. So, really, it's not specifically for fishing because uh, a lot of these words are actually transferred into the popular language through idioms. Okay, I'm going to do a screen share here. We're going to do a little light reading. Increase your 
Learning the lingo increase your fishing vocabulary. Okay, there we go. One of these is a pole. <laughs> One of these is not. Okay, this is a pole, or a telephone pole, or an electricity electric pole. This is a rod. Uh, okay. Uh, let's take turns doing a little reading, and we'll talk about what you've read uh, afterwards. Or hey, Luis, can you start with the first paragraph here? Yes. Although there is little mystery involved with fishing, it does have its own vocabulary. To a non-angler, many of the words and expressions used with fishing can seem senseless or even ridiculous, especially those with multiple meanings. Okay, great job. So, uh, right off, actually, there's one word here uh, to a non-angler. Or, hey, Luis, what's, what's an angler? Uh, this is the term related to math and angler? <laughs> you might think so. Speaking of ridiculous, obviously, an angle... Right? Geometry angles. Yeah. Did they say? 45 degree angle. No, well, yes. I mean, yes, obviously, angle has that meaning. But an angler, you, Jorge, are a non angler. Angler is another word for fisherman. Angling is another word for fishing. So you yourself are a non angler. <laughs> okay. A more formal, formal word for. Uh, fisherman, there you go. Uh, okay, if you're if you're uh, angling for a compliment or fishing for a compliment, you're trying to get a a compliment from someone. Oh, how do you like my hair? How do you like my new shoes? Oh, they're wonderful. Uh, okay, so that's. Uh, <laughs> You angle, angling for a compliment. Now that I know the meaning, <laughs> it's kind of crazy that I say that is the, uh, the math concept. Well, yeah. I don't know. Which, that's actually, your answer is actually quite logical. Really, it's kind of weird that it's for fishing, actually. All right, uh, let's continue. Carolina, can you read the next paragraph to this little story? Uh -huh. I had this pointed out to, to me several years ago. I stopped by Tony's bait and tackle in Manahankin looking to purchase a new fishing rod. When I said I wanted to buy a pole, the venerable Ed Tonison, Senior Wakek, me to the front door. Uh, okay, um, most in, in English-speaking countries, there are shops that sell equipment and bait to fishermen, and they're very often called bait and tackle shops. Okay, uh, Carolina, what is what is bait? Bait. Yeah. Do you have any idea? <laughs> or could you give me an example? No. Might be easier to give maybe, an example. Maybe is the thing that you put at the end of the rope and the fish eating? Yes, that is know. that's correct. That's you're <laughs> absolutely correct. All right, but you wouldn't you don't use a rope to fish. You use a rope to climb mountains. You use a line to fish. Fishing line, a monofilament line to be exact. Okay, and that is right. Uh, the bait is what you – do you know what fishermen use for bait? Carolina, do you have any idea what kinds what? of things? Worm, what? very good. That's correct. Um, worm is correct, the, the classic bait. However, uh, fishing in the ocean, you often use squid. 
or pieces of other fish mm -hmm. or other fish, smaller fish. And you hook them onto your hook in such a way that they can swim around still. Um, in addition, I would also have to say that fishermen will use absolutely anything for bait. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you name it. They'll try anything. Crickets, lizards, uh, even food like bacon. Um, bacon is very good for catching catfish, by the way. Uh, they'll try anything. Peanut butter sandwich, a piece of cheese, doesn't really matter. <laughs> uh, whatever works, so it doesn't really matter what it is. Okay, Carolina, what is tackle mm -hmm. as a noun? Okay, not, not, not the verb. Um, Big tackle. Oh my god, that is a difficult one. <laughs> Well, bait and tackle kind of go together. You need them both to fish. Does Maybe the tackle is the thing that grab the bait. Uh, well, that yes, that's an example. You have the hook, uh, tackle, uh, all the equipment that you need, um, the parts and bits and pieces that you need to go fishing. Fish hook, uh, swivel weights to weight down your line, um, uh, bobbers or corks, uh, plugs, swivels, oh I said swivels, um, lures, sometimes fishermen instead of using bait, okay, they use crafted, well like flies as an example, or they use other lures spoons that spin around in the water and flashlight to attract the fish, things like that. All of that mm -hmm. stuff collectively is known as tackle. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, all right, back to our story. Uh, all right, he went in to buy a fishing pole, and the, the owner, this guy Ed, walked him to the front door. Uh, all right. Um... Okay, Jorge, can you read the next paragraph? Yes. He pointed out some telephone poles to me and said, They are poles. I think what you want is a fishing rope. I never forgot the lesson. Okay. Uh, <laughs> there you go. All right. Here's Ed is a real stickler. Of course, um, all right, English speakers for and this is pretty true, for novices and informal, or informally it's a fishing pole, it's not a big deal, but for serious fishermen it's never a pole, it's definitely a rod. There are def several different kinds of raw uh, fishing rods. Um, do you know, or hey, what's a, you have any idea what a fly rod is? No, no, I have any, any idea. You have any? Okay, you know what fly fishing is? Fly fishing? Yeah. No. No idea. No idea. Uh, okay, it's a, it's a type of fishing that's more finesse than force. Uh, you you can do it. They they do this for, in salt water. Um. In, on sandy flats, shallow salt water, ocean water for bonefish and barracuda, but uh, also mostly you see it in fresh water. It's the kind of fishing where the lure or the tackle, the lure, is uh, it's created with feathers or pieces of cotton or string. And it hooked. It's made to look like a fly or some kind of insect, probably some kind of insect that the fish normally eat. And um. the uh, and the line is very light, and the and the and the so it was the pole, uh, the rod, I should say rod, is very light and springy, um, and you kind of flick the fly out into the river, for example, and the fly floats on the top. So you're trying to 
lure uh, a fish to rise and grab that fly. Very finesse kind of fishing. Uh, very difficult, well not really, not very difficult, but it takes some practice to learn how to fly fish because you, it's so light you have to learn how to, how to throw the fly. It takes a little practice. Okay, uh, Carolina, can you continue? Okay, the term fisherman has long been used to designate a person who fishes. However, since the literal meaning of the term precludes femini, femini participants, an angler is now the preferred form for someone who fishes. Okay. Uh, fisherman has long been used to designate. Designate. Okay, designate. Uh, okay. Um, interesting. All right, well, just a side note about English. When you see this um, suffix, this <laughs> suffix ending, this specific ending, A-T-E, uh, there are many words that ha have this uh, suffix, these words, when they're a verb, then we say eight. We strongly pronounce the verb, like separate. You need to separate your recycle, recyclables from your, from your garbage. But when it's, many times the, the word can be used as a verb or an adjective. When it's an adjective, it's not eight. It's but. If you think about like separate. Put the recyclables in a separate container. Okay. He is the designate. Uh, okay. It can be a noun as well. But designate. All right. Designate means uh, like chosen mm -hmm. um, or picked or define uh, in this case. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. All right. Your boss can designate you as... Uh, the person responsible for a project. He's chosen you, like that. Or designate can mean uh, to define something, like here. Uh, okay. All right, well, not much about fishing there, so we'll move on. Uh, or, hey, Luis, uh, next one here. Okay. Uh... It is very interesting to know how many fishing terms are used in contexts outside of fishing. Bait is an organic substance that an angler places on his hook to attract a fish. A lure? Is that okay? A yeah, lure? Lure. A lure. 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 Is some form of artificial attraction. Both bait and lure are often used outside of a fishing context, as when a woman uses perfume to lure men in. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, the whole idea of bait and lure and catching. I think I introduced the class today to talk about how it's used metaphorically. Um, to talk about getting customers for a business, it's also used uh, in the area of rom romance, trying to catch a husband <laughs> or a wife, uh, like catch a fish. Um, mm -hmm. Okay, so we already talked about bait, and uh, a lure is the artificial form. I, I mentioned that there's different types, a fly. Uh, All right. A plug, a spoon. There are many different types, and quite often they're designed so that when you pull them through the water, they move around, they jerk back and forth, or they spin around, or something. There's some kind of movement to trick a fish into thinking it's something alive. Uh, uh, yeah. Okay, a question. So, mm -hmm. uh, it is okay if in some sentence. I use that word, for example, like uh, I want 
to lure a couple of clans? <laughs> mm, uh, yeah, actually, sure. Um, yes, it would be okay. Absolutely, you, you're trying to attract them in some way. Uh, so, that, yeah, that is he used as a bear or uh, to lure. Or yeah, you, you just used it. At, it's a verb or a noun. You just you just used it as an infinitive verb. And you used it correctly, actually. Actually, okay. so it it can be a noun or it can be a verb. And yes, you can try to lure customers. You try to lure customers to your website, for example, by maybe having a contest or having um, a funny video or you know, absolutely, sure, uh, absolutely, you okay. can use it. Okay, thank you. It's called advertising. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay. Um, great. Uh, all right. And even uh, bait uh, is used idiomatically. Somebody, if you if you manage to lure a customer, or hey, and and the customer takes the bait. Okay. They maybe they enter a contest on your website, and they fill in their contact information. Ah. <laughs> Then All you right. can say they took the bait. All right, we can now they're on our contact list. Okay, um, so it becomes a lead for you. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Okay, Carolina, moving on. Um, the general term of a fishing gear here. Gear. Mm -hmm. Is tackle hooks are curved pieces of metal designed 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 to snare the fish when he takes a bite of the bait or lure. A circle hook is one of shaped shaped like a circle designed to inflict minimum injury to a fish so it can be released more easily. Mm -hmm. Okay, first of all, fishing gear. Okay, uh, gear is another word for equipment, often used for sports. So uh, it's used for all kinds of sports. So if I'm going skiing, I need to I need to get. Uh, I need to gather up all my gear, my skis, my poles, my boots, uh, all of that. Okay, whatever. Um, you know, even playing football, you need your maybe you need your spikes, your special shoes, maybe your shirt, your uniform shirt, maybe a ball. Not much gear for football, but still. Uh, so you could use it for any kind of sport or activity. The it's a word for equipment. And all right, we already talked. I, yeah. I heard that word for cars. Gear. Sorry again. I heard that word uh, using in a car, like my. Oh yeah. Like oh yeah. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Totally different meaning. I, I totally hadn't even thought of that. Sure. Yeah. A car has gears as well. Of course, first gear, second gear, third gear. Fourth gear, reverse, mm, neutral. Okay. Those are gears in a car. Yeah, totally, completely different meaning. And then the the gears in the car relate to another meaning for gears. Like if you scroll up here in the Hangout, the there's a symbol of a gear in the um, toolbar on the top of the Hangouts page. This is where your settings are. It has a, a icon, a little picture of mm -hmm. a gear, the little teeth, like you have gears in a watch, for example, and they okay, spin yeah. together. Yeah, yeah. Actually, actually, that's what's happening in your car. You have Inside your car, you have gears that spin around and shift when you're shifting gear, gears in your car. This is different, though. Uh, this is another name, another, sorry, another definition of gear to mean equipment. Uh, okay. And as I said, it's called tackle, 
And I used to fish a lot when I was in the United States, and most people who fish a lot have their own tackle box. Uh, this is a kind of a specially designed box that has a lot of little compartments inside of it so you can separate your tackle or fishing gear into little compartments and it usually folds out so it, it's a nice little box but then you can fold out these different little compartments to find your tackle. Uh, yeah and then it talks about the hook. The hook is actually the thing that really the piece of metal that catches the fish. Okay. Um, many people like to catch and release. So uh, catch and release is when you, you're, you're fishing just for fun, not really to eat. So you're going to take catch the fish and release it back in the water, maybe take a picture if it's a big enough fish or whatever. Uh, take yourself a selfie <laughs> if you want to, what have you. And... Uh, uh, okay, uh, and I want to mention that it mentions a circle hook. It, a circle hook is smooth, so it's easy to remove, and it, yeah, okay, yes, it will hurt the fish. It has a point, It's but it's very easy to remove the fish, and the fish is going to survive if you properly remove it. There are also a type of hook with that are called barbed hooks. This is like a barbed arrow. If you think about an arrow, right, an arrow has a, a, a kind of a hook that comes back. Um, okay. So uh, it, it, it catches. It's hard to pull out. You use a barbed hook if you want to eat the fish because it's, it's going to be hard for the fish to escape. It's also you have to really kind of basically hurt the fish in order to take it off. So you're probably going to use barbed hooks if, if, you're, um, if you're catching the fish to eat. A barb is kind of related. Uh, uh, Carolina, what is a barb? Not related to fishing, but related to English more widely. Do you have any idea? It's your verb? Uh, a barb. Uh, well, it's a noun. I don't know if it's a noun. Yeah. Yes, it's not your verb. Uh, no. It's a, a barb is a derogatory comment. All right. Okay, it hurts. In other words. Whoops, not derogatory. Whoops. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, whoops. Yep. Der hmm. Der oh my goodness. I for suddenly forgot how to spell derogatory. A derogatory comment, um, uh, something meant to hurt somebody's feelings. Okay, is a barb. Mm -hmm. Oh, he got me with that. Barb. Okay, so barb also has that, uh, again, kind of crosses over into the regular English language. Um, yeah, that's it, exactly. Uh, all right. Um, also, the whole idea of hooking something. We have a hook here. All right. Uh, Carolina, what does it mean if someone is hooked? Hooked on. Um, how about hooked on? You're hooked on Feeling heroin, love? drugs, or something. What? Fell in love. Fell in love. Fell in love? No, damn, <laughs> no, no. You can be yeah, hooked on love. That's kind of funny. If you're hooked <laughs> on drugs, okay. Uh, okay, it means you're addicted. You're stuck, like the fish on the hook. You're caught. You're stuck. You're addicted. You're hooked mm -hmm. on something. Uh, okay. So I can say I I am hooked with coffee. You're. You, we usually use hooked on. I guess it's a phrasal verb. 
You're hooked on coffee? Yeah. Uh, I am hooked on coffee. Yeah. All right. There, there was a very popular series of uh, English teaching um, uh, recordings, and this whole po program, it was called uh, to teach how, the very basics of English. It was called Hooked on Phonics. I still remember this. Hooked on phonics, so you can be hooked on anything, yeah, I suppose, which is, you know, crazy, like hooked on pronunciation or something, a little crazy, but there you go. Uh, okay, let's, let's, uh, I suppose, um, we should greet Ken. Hi, Ken. Welcome to the class. Yes, hello. How are you? Well, I'm fine. How are you? Thank you. Uh, I'm fine, thank you. Okay. Uh, Ken, you, I'm going to throw you right into the into the class here. Could you do me a favor and read this short paragraph? We're reading about fishing related to and terminologies related to fishing. Go, go ahead. A sinker is a lead weight used to sink bait, baited hook to the bottom where the fish are located. A bank sinker is rounded, so it drags more easily across the bottom. A pyramid sinker is a shape like a pyramid and will embed itself in the sand to hold the line in place. Okay. Uh, in this case, uh, in the up in the first sentence here, Ken, uh, this is actually a lead weight. Huh, lead weight. Yes, it's actually made out of lead. Uh, it's a With, kind of one type of steel, iron. Well, it's. I think it's its own. I believe lead is its own element. Element. Okay. Mm -hmm. I believe. It's, by the way, it's very strange that people still use lead weights in fishing because lead is found to be toxic in the human system. It affects the nervous system. They no longer make lead paint or or and make things out of lead, toys and things like that, but they still use it in fishing. I don't really know why. Lead is considered a very, very heavy, heavy element and in English we often use lead as a sort of uh, it kind of a, a it, it has a um, connotation of being really heavy. Like a uh, okay, Ken. If somebody has a lead foot, do you know what that means? Lead foot. A lead foot. Lead foot. Uh, He's a lead foot. Somebody become very tired and. Uh -huh. Good yeah. guess, but no. It has to do with driving. Mm -hmm. In reference to driving, he's a lead foot. It means like his foot is very heavy on the gas. He drives really fast. Ah, oh, I see. Okay, it's the idea. So lead o overall has this kind of uh, connotation. We we reference lead when we are when we are kind of explaining something's very heavy. Uh, anyway, okay. Sinkers are definitely used in fishing. They're definitely uh, definitely pretty much necessary, depending on what kind of fish you're fishing for. Obviously, if you're fishing for catfish, which are bottom feeders, uh, uh, then obviously you need a, a lot of a lot more weight, and you want it really on the bottom. Sometimes you're pulling the weight, and you want the you want your bait somewhere in the middle of the depth of the water, so you use them medium sinker, sometimes you want your bait on the top, depends what you're fishing for. Uh, okay, well, what else did I uh, notice here? Yeah, oh, um, can it will embed itself, embed, this is a verb, okay. Um, to embed is to fix, uh, stay in one place, Okay, the, the triangular shape of the pyramid sinker makes it stick into the sand or embed itself in the sand. Um, if a spy is embedded 
an embedded spy. It means it's a spy who has been living and working in a regular job. They seem to be a regular person for 10 years, but really they're spying for another country. So they're kind of stuck, fixed in place. Uh, okay. All right. Let's move on. Jorge Luis. Next one yes. here. There are different ways to fish. You can anchor a boat in one place. If you travel slowly under power through the water, dragging your line in the water, you are trolling. If you move through the water propelled only by the wind and tide, you are drifting. This is where you will use a bank sinker. Okay. All right, let's talk about these terminologies. Before we do, a little pronunciation. You're propelled only by the wind and the tide. Wind. wind. When it's, yeah, when it's a noun, it's wind. When it's a verb, it's wind. Oh, good. Okay. Uh, all right, let's talk about some of these actions, different styles of fishing. Okay, you can anchor. Uh, let's talk about how they translate into more common English. Do you know what a news anchor is, Jorge? No, no, I don't. Okay. Well, when you watch the news, TV news, um, there's usually one, one guy or woman behind the desk, and she reads the news, and occasionally she sends it to a reporter. You can watch a reporter do their report, and then it's back to the anchor. The, uh, like uh, the main. Yes. How can, I say, the, how can I say the main presenter? I don't know. Main presenter? Yeah, that's a good way to say the, it. The yeah. main, the main presenter. That's it. That is a news anchor. So they anchor the news. They 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 basically an anchor is not only the is used widely in English to metaphorically mean like um uh it literally means something to keep you in one place. So more metaphorically in English it's used to talk about keeping people centered or being the strong part of a team. For example, you could say, "Oh, Robert scores averages 1.5 goals per game. He's in our on our football team. He is the anchor for our team. Without Robert, we would be horrible." Okay. All right. Yeah. So, okay, the strong part is your your anchor. In a race, in a relay race where you have one, two, three, four guys running a race, the last guy is called the anchor. Because he's the one, he's the strong one. He's the one that has to finally win. Uh, okay, so it has very positive connotations. On the other hand, not so positive is trolling. <laughs> okay, or hey, Luis, what is? I know. Yeah. In, in in the net, uh, yeah. in the net terms, what is a troll? But uh, yes, when, when right. you. <laughs> when you try to uh, to screw a son a someone to someone to uh, yep. yeah to make bad jokes and these kind of things. Actually, I am, I am a troll for my little brother. <laughs> I am my little you brother. So yeah, you troll your brother, your little brother. That's very funny. Yeah. Okay. Every time that I can, I do it. Okay. Well, this is where that whole concept comes from. Because if you're a troll on the internet or you're trolling someone, then you're kind of moving back and forth from one website to another, one comment board to another, one article, news article to another, leaving your bait, <laughs> yes. baiting people, you're baiting people. You're, you're trying to get people upset or you're trying to, to get them to answer you or you're trying to annoy them. When you do that, you're baiting someone. You're trying to trick them into answering you. So trolls just want other people to talk to them, or they want to torture their little brothers, perhaps. 
Okay. Well, this this is where that entire concept comes from. It's like um, this. It comes from this style of fishing where you're moving and fishing, and you're just trying to trick somebody, a fish, not somebody, <laughs> into taking your bait. Uh, okay, we also can use the word drifting in regular English. Uh, do you know what a drifter is, Jorge? Uh, a person. I have heard uh, that they're relating to cars. When you are ah, oh yeah. <laughs> drifting in cars, but I don't, I don't know another meaning. Okay. Um, we also have the the term a drifter. He's a drifter. That would be a person who, well, they're propelled only by the wind and the tide. A drifter kind of moves from one city to another. Uh, a hobo, uh, another word is a hobo, somebody who basically doesn't have a home and they just move from place to place to place. They're a nomad? Called, well, kind of a nomad, but um, a little bit different. See, uh, okay, a nomad, it's similar. A nomad actually has a plan. A nomad moves because of the seasons, and he moves from one place to another for a reason. Usually, a, like a nomadic tribesman, would, they have a regular cycle. They go here because that's where the rains are. Then they go over here because they can gather some kind of food, and then they, you know what I mean? They, they more or less have a plan. A drifter has no plan. He just, he gets on a train, he doesn't know where the train is going. Does it matter? So, there, uh, this I may not even exist in other countries, but in the United States, there are definitely people who ride the trains. They just go where it goes. They, they don't really have a plan where they're moving to or where they want to go. So that person is a drifter. Very similar to the idea of that your boat is drifting. It's just moving wherever the wind and the current take it. Okay. Okay, I got it. All right. Uh, okay, Carolina, next. Uh, next if one. you are located in one spot and you want to place your bait at this time, Away, you don't, you don't know through it. You cast it. If you cast your line and its gate is not, oh my God, on the rail, you are said to, to have a black flash. Backlash. Yeah. Backlash. Yeah. We, for some reason, if fishermen, us. Fishermen, I can count myself in here. We we have just different words. We don't throw the bait out. We cast it. All right, that's mm -hmm. the that's the verb. Uh, okay, mm -hmm. if you cast your line, it gets snarled. This word is snarled. Mm -hmm. Snarled means all stuck up in something. Um, you know, when you have rope or wire gets snarled, it's all tangled. Uh, that's the idea. Um, you can get snarled up in red tape. For example, you're trying to build a house and you need a building permit, a water use permit, uh, you need a waiver from the city government to, to dig a hole. Okay, you can get snarled in red tape. You're all tangled up in it. You see? Mm -hmm. So, uh, when your line, again, not rope, but line, gets snarled on your reel, you, you have, it's called backlash. That's right. It's um, very common. The other thing that happens even more than backlash is when you, if you're, uh, that is, if you're freshwater fishing, you throw your line and your, your hook gets stuck on something. doesn't matter if it's throw your line and you, you accidentally throw it into a tree. It happens. Uh, you get snagged. It's called a snag. Uh, or your line gets, maybe your hook dragging along the bottom gets stuck on a rock. So you may have to break your line. That's a snag. So in 
real terms in real English, if you hit a snag, okay, oh, we're trying to make a business deal, but we hit a snag, okay, that means you're kind of stuck, at least mm -hmm. temporarily. Um, uh, yeah, so this word also gets gets used in the popular English. Oh, we ran into a snag. We've had a snag. Uh, okay, a temporary setback. Okay. Uh, moving along. Uh, Ken. Yes. All right. This uh, next paragraph, please. When a fish starts to eat your bait, bite, bait, you are said to be getting a bite. If someone circles, the bite can be referred to a hit, nipple, tickle, or strike. Okay, in some circles. Uh, okay, in other words, colloquial expressions, which I've definitely heard, bite, hit, nipple. I personally never use tickle, but definitely strike. Uh, a nibble is a very small bite. You, you can feel the fish biting, but just barely. You're not even sure if there's something taking your bait or not taking your bait. A hit is an obvious, okay, that you know there's a fish when you have a hit. And a strike is the, the, when it almost pulls your pull out of your hands or into the water. It's a very hard bite. Uh, okay, now these terminologies are often also used related to um, business and customers. Uh, okay, it would be very common for somebody to say, oh, well, we haven't even had a nibble for uh, with a new marketing campaign. No one in, seems to be interested. Oh, we've, we've got a toll-free line to ask for product help. And we haven't even had a nibble. Uh, whatever, you're selling vacuum cleaners. Uh, okay. Oh, I got a bite. Someone is showing interest in a product. Someone is showing interest as a customer. We, we can use some of these terms, especially nibble and bite, to talk about, to talk about that. It's very common to use at least a uh, bite and nibble. I've definitely heard used in reference to customers. Okay, uh, uh, or hey, next line, yes. the paragraph, whatever. Fishing lines are made of different substances. Monoline is made of a type of plastic. It's clear and relatively inexpensive. Braided line is thinner for its strength but cut much more. It does, it does not stretch like mono does, making it easier to feel vice. But when it when it tangles, it does produce some nasty sna snarls and backlash. Okay, backlashes. Uh, okay. Uh, all right. Um, okay, monoline. All right, fishing lines are made of different substances. What is a braid when in Regular English, or hey, uh, for Eric, uh, have you ever seen a woman who braids her hair, for example? Yeah, it's like a. I have the idea, but uh, I don't have. I don't know how to express this when you are. Uh, what can I say? Uh, tie in different ways. Is mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's kind of tied together or folded one strand, not strand of hair. One, uh, one, piece, uh, one what? <laughs> now I don't know how to say it. Like with hair, you 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 um you group the hair into three 
three pieces of hair. <laughs> three pieces of hair. That's not very good. Anyway, you fold the one on top of the other to uh, create the braid. Now, braiding wire or rope or something like that makes it a lot stronger. You're, you're, you're making it a lot stronger. Okay, anyway, it's hard to explain. Uh, okay. All right, let's continue. Uh, Carolina, next one. The name of fish, of fish can become very confusing as it seems each species can have several different titles. A menhaden is an oily fish used for bait. It is also known as a moss bunker, bunker a pogi. Yeah, pogi. Pogi. Uh, yeah, I, I, I don't even know what this is. Okay, bait fish are the small fish <laughs> that you use. Bait fish, by the way. When you use a fish to catch another fish, it's called bait fish. All right. I don't even know what these things are. Uh, oh, okay. Oh, I can use that word if I want to say to someone that they are like I'm a tester. Or I mean, if I if I want to try something, but I don't want to try it personally. Oh, I I don't want to try it by myself because maybe it hurts. But I want that another person try because it's not me. It's another person that will be hurt. I will be so okay. sorry. I can say. You are my mouth monker. <laughs> you, you could, but <coughs> actually, we do have uh, something for that. I don't know how to. The only problem is I don't know how to spell it. Uh, yeah, maybe no. Uh, how do you spell it? Um, G U. Uh, you could, and that's very funny. Oh, there it is. Okay. You can also call that as somebody, your guinea pig. You're my guinea pig. Okay. It better. Okay, for exactly that reason. You want somebody else to do it before you do it. Or you're experimenting on some somebody. Uh, okay. All right. Uh, Ken, can you read this one here? You sure. should. Okay, uh, striped bass may very well be our most popular game fish. It also is called a bath. A bath yeah. striped yeah. Uh, Lion's cider and a rock fish in the south. Blue fish are often referred to as yellow eyes. Choppers and slammers. A very small blue fish is a snapper. Why uh, a one to three pound blue fish would be called a tailor or cocktail blue. Okay, all kinds of crazy things. All right, not really necessary to know these, but these are fish. This is obviously an American writer because I, I don't even know some of these terms. Striped bass, bass, it's very popular. Bass fishing in America is very popular. Um, sometimes I've heard them called stripers. I've never even heard of line cider. I've heard of rockfish. You know, Definitely, I've been blue fishing before. I don't know any of these terminologies, yellow eyes, choppers, slammers, but I'm not really a professional, I guess. Okay, one thing, Ken, obviously you fixed it, so you realized uh, when you're talking about a guitar, it's a bass. When you're talking about a fish, it's a bass. <laughs> right. Uh, okay. Well, uh, actually, uh, unfortunately... We are pretty much out of time here. Um, okay, so, all right, we, we couldn't finish, so here we go. The most famous retort is that the angler almost had a tremendous catch, but the big one got away. Oh, okay, well, this one's going to get away because we are out of time. Hopefully you use, uh, you learned some a little bit about fishing and a little bit about uh, fishing terminologies we use in English. Thank you very much. Thank you.